Carolyn Vigil is our guest from Ark of the Eastern Panhandle. Carolyn, good morning. How are you? Good morning, sir. How are you today? I am very well. Thanks for taking some time to talk with us today. I've not had anybody from Ark of the Eastern Panhandle on before. Can you tell us about the program? Absolutely. Um, so we're a regional chapter of the National Arc, which is an organization that provides support to the disabled, um, so intellectually disabled, physically disabled. The chapter that we represent, Arc of the Eastern Panhandle, is focused just in this region, so serving Jefferson, Berkeley, and Morgan counties. And we provide um, programming, some advocacy services, and then also just support and social um, outlets for persons with disabilities in our region. And you've got an event coming up as well, correct? We do. We're excited to announce that we will be having a wellness expo this Saturday, and it's going to focus on a variety of different services um, that are a, that are provided in our region, um, trying to bring a community together. And um, we'll have it at Shepherd University this Saturday, March 11th, from 2 to 4 in the store ballroom, which is the third floor of their student center on King Street. And everyone is welcome. You'll have many different speakers there, too, if I recall. We are. Our featured speaker, speaker I'm sorry, is going to be Dr. Jessica Graham. Um, she is from Shepherd University's... I'm sorry, I'm trying to remember the title. I apologize. That's okay. Um, exercise Science. So she's one of their leading professors of exercise science. And she's going to be speaking specifically about the importance of movement um, for everyone, but also specifically for this community, so for people with disabilities. What kind of disabilities will be covered during the course of this Saturday's event? Um, we're going to be focusing mostly on services and support for persons with intellectually um, developmental disabilities. So IDD is, is the term that we use. Um, but again, anyone is welcome. We'll have representatives from state organizations um, as well as regional organizations that can provide support and guidance on, for example, how to sign up for Medicaid. We will have free health screenings that anyone can participate in. Um, so blood pressure, and uh, we actually will have someone there from WVU uh, Medicine for brain trauma screenings um, or just providing information on how to be well. And have you been keeping up with the changes in DHHR during this legislative session in Charleston, Carolyn? Yes, definitely. I was listening to uh, just what you were speaking of earlier. Um, I'm looking forward to some changes and streamlining to try to get more resources to those that actually need it. Um, I know funding continues to be an issue, and that is something that we advocate for for our community. Um, one of the particular topics that we're working on right now is home-based services and making sure those with intellectual disabilities do have access to home-based services. John Gilstrap. When you talk about uh, programming that is offered by Arc of the Eastern Panhandle, what, what, what does programming mean? And, and, and you also mentioned advocacy. Advocacy for mm -hmm. what? Um, advocacy generally for different either resources and funding or policy changes is something that we've looked on, so uh, looked into and have provided support. Um, equal pay for persons with disabilities, uh, becoming an employment first state is what the term is being used, and it's something that we've talked with legislators about in West Virginia. In terms of programming, uh, we are fairly small, and we were just founded in 2019, right before the pandemic. Um, but we have instituted the Pathways Program, which is a pre-vocational services program that provides training and um, capabilities for employment. So really getting people prepared for employment and actually providing job coaching services to those that are interested uh, with persons with disabilities. And on average or in general, what age group are you dealing with? We are primarily focused on adults. Uh, many ARC chapters do the entire population. We're focused on adults and primarily young adults, so really focusing on those individuals that have just aged out of the school system uh, that may not have any outlets um, or the ability to be employed. We're really trying to address the need to fill that gap 
and give them the pre-vocational services opportunities and even employment matching opportunities. We work with Goodwill and a couple of other organizations for employment matching and employment coaching um, so we can have job shadows with them to get them acclimated to their new environment. So really young adults, and right now we're primarily focused on um, vocational services. John Bodwell, have there been a lot of changes to the services that you're able to offer through the years? I mean, are you able to offer more services now than, say, five, ten years ago? I mean, have we gotten have we gotten more awareness through your advocacy and everything where you're able to do more for people now? I think that's a fantastic question. So we've actually seen a difference just in the last three or four years. Um, I think it is because of the employment demands. It's been hard to hire people um, for certain types of jobs. So there's a, an openness now for hiring people with disabilities just generally that we've seen. Um, we were granted monies from the state back in 2020 to start our Pathways program. And then we just received a second grant from Unicare of West Virginia to continue the Pathways program work. So um, historically, that has not been something we were able to do. But now I think with more demand for employ employees and employees that can do all kinds of jobs, um, then we've seen that increase in awareness, but also increase in, in need. And we've gotten a great partnership established with Aramark at Shepherd University. Um, so we kind of have a pipeline for employment there, which has been phenomenal. And that, that was not, you know, that was not always the case years and years ago. Do you also deal with a lot of people who are in the waiver program, which is the program for the, the severely handicapped? We do. Um, most, I would say 80% of our members, um, the people that are regularly participating in our programming are on IDD waiver. And is that, is that, has that been expanding? I mean, I know each legislative, each legislative session, session, there's stuff in and out with that. Has that been expanding or contracting? Can you, can you speak about that a little? Yes, there was a, an extensive wait list to be on IDD waiver. I guess it was maybe about three years ago and West Virginia did clear the wait list. So now we're seeing a lot of people participating in the IDD waiver program that should be on the IDD waiver program. But also, interestingly, we're seeing people moving here from other states so they can be part of the West Virginia IDD waiver program because wait lists um, in states like Indiana, for example, we have a member that just moved um, to our region from Indiana so they could be on the IDD waiver. Um, so we're seeing that kind of increase. For, in, for, people in that don't, for people that don't know, Carolyn, can you explain what the IDD waiver program is? And I'm not an IDD waiver expert, although I've been in and around this for many years. We do have an adult son on the IDD waiver, so I've gone through that application process. But basically what it is um, at a very high level is a support for services and funding for those with disabilities, particularly those with um, intellectual developmental delays. Um, to be able to receive services, um, and the services can be the ability to go to DAHAB, um, the ability to get funding for Medicaid, um, and also transportation to and from medical appointments. Those are some of the benefits that you get, but they, they're very customized. So once you're in the IDD waiver program, they look at what the needs of that individual is, and then they have wraparound services to provide support. What is, go ahead. I was going to ask you, Carolyn, and if you covered this already, I missed it. My apologies. But uh, does your organization also help folks that are in uh, situations where they might require an IDD waiver to also eventually try to sign up and qualify and get through the cumbersome process of trying to get Social Security disability payments as well? Yes, we do. Um, now, we're not experts in that either. I like to always qualify that. But we can navigate, help someone navigate that system. Mm -hmm. And we've got two that we're working with right now that are going through the application process for SSI, um, so Social Security Income Support. And it can be somewhat time-consuming, yes. and it's a little bit different for each individual. So I always like to caveat that with everyone. It's not the same standard process for everybody. And you, you absolutely need to, for both SSBI, the waiver, or SSI, Social Security Income Support, you need a diagnosis 
and you'll need to go through a psychological eval process um, to, to test where you are with your abilities and disability. Well, and once, uh, once you're on the, the federal program, once you've been on it for 24 months, you also qualify for, for Medicare, which mm-hmm. opens up even more avenues um, where people can get even more services, especially there, there are these new plans out, these new programs, I don't know if you've heard of them, called dual plans, which are for people with Medicare and Medicaid that add a lot of extra benefits on for that population where they get, you know, a few thousand dollars a year worth of dental. They get, you know, they get money for food every month in addition to anything else they're getting, eyeglasses, a little bit of everything. But those are mm-hmm. services that come no charge for people with Medicare and Medicaid. We, we work with that population a lot. It's, it's super what can be done once they have the 24 months and they do qualify for Medicare. Yeah, that's phenomenal. And I have, I have seen that, especially just going through the process as a mother, um, that we have been able to take advantage of some of those things for our son. Um, and I need to learn more about that. So I'm glad you brought that well, up. I mean, that gives I, me something to focus on. I would love to, um, to give you a call and we can talk about that at some point soon because there's, there's a lot, there are a lot more benefits that, that a lot of people don't know about that will really help the population that you deal with. Okay, yeah, I would love to take you up on that Carolyn, have a conversation. I'll, I'll send you John's number. Okay, I appreciate that. Thank you, John. Mr. Gilstrap, how do you, uh, the recipients, are probably they called clients, I guess? Um, we, call, we call them members, members. Um, because it, it really is, we like to think of it as a community, and they're a member of the community, so that's the term that we use. So what's the vector by which your, your members find uh, Arc of the Eastern Panhandle, or, or the uh, National Arc Foundation. Uh. We do have a website uh, and a Facebook, and that has has actually been one of our biggest challenges is finding those that need us. Um, which is why one of the reasons we're putting on this expo is to help get the word out into the community. So we do have an online presence. Um, if someone's interested in participating or learning more, they can certainly find us that way. But we also have monthly meetings at Shepherd University. So the second Tuesday of every month from 6 to 7, we meet at the Student Center at Shepherd. Um, and anyone is welcome. And anyone, any family member is welcome because we do also have family members that attend on behalf and participate on behalf of their loved ones. Um, I'm happy to also just give out my cell phone number for those that are interested and may have questions and want to call and follow up. It's 703-629-6997. Could you repeat that again, Carolyn? Sure. It's 703-629-6997 for anyone interested in learning more about how they can participate. Uh, Or please come to our expo on Saturday. We're hoping to have a great crowd. Now, we've talked a lot about helping people navigate the what sounds like a, a terrifying road to finding aid and support and uh, Medicaid and Medicare, that sort of thing. Are there physical programs or the um, activity type programs that our uh, Eastern Panhandle also offers that less less involved with getting help than in providing help? Um, I'm not sure that I understand. So helping them navigate to finding support, is that what you're asking? Well, no, we have talked about uh, the the Arc of the Eastern Panhandle and through, uh, John was talking about this just a minute ago and navigating the, mm-hmm. the confusing path to, to assistance. But programming right. through specific to Arc of the Eastern Panhandle, it's hard to say, Arc of the Eastern Panhandle. <laughs> what are the some of the specific programs that you offer? Oh, I see. Um, right now, it really is just the pre-vocational services. Um, so what does we that have mean? programming. It's, we do job training. Uh, right now, we're going through these monthly cycles of how to fill out an application, how to write a resume, how to look, look for a job. We do role-playing um, for an interview. And then we actually will do a search for jobs and work with partners such as Goodwill that do do job posting and job matching. If someone has been identified, then we'll provide a job coach free of charge that will go shadow those individuals and help them acclimate, assimilate, um, communicate with the other people. Not everyone's trained to work with this community, so that's why those job coaches are really important, especially in the initial phases of, of the employment opportunity. So right now, that's where we're really, really focused. Um, I'd love to expand and do other things 
Um, there's a variety of needs out there, but we decided to start with vocation. What is the the perfect kind of job opportunity for your members, for employers who are out there listening, who, who have some openings? What kind of positions ideally would you fill? Yeah, and it varies because everyone has different abilities, but I can talk about specifically the path our son has taken. Um, so he is high functioning on the autism spectrum. He's very verbal, um, actually social, um, but does have some limitations. Uh, so particularly having to do with anything math related or money related, um, we were able to get him placed with Aramark to work in dining services at Shepherd. And what he does is he wipes tables, he stocks cups, um, he, he organizes some of the silverware, and he's really kind of support staff to those in dining services that may not have time to do all these things. So that's a, it's a really good fit for him. Um, and as he's been there, they've given, given him increased responsibilities. So he's going through his food certification training right now, which the Ark of the Eastern Panhandle is helping him with. Um, so hopefully he can work that to being a food support personnel person as well. Um, and we have um, one of our members works at Dunkin' Donuts, and she provides prep support. To those Ka Carolyn, your your phone's kind of ducking in and out on us here. I'm not sure if you've moved at all, oh, or if sorry. you're. Oh, what you just, whatever you just did right there is perfect. Keep keep doing what you're okay. doing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. Um. So I guess just generally food prep. Um. Cleaning is also good, but we have some that are very, very good with computers. Um, so sometimes a computer position, filing positions can be very, um, can often be very good opportunities as well. So it, it really depends on the individual, but I'm just thinking about the members we have right now and the types of positions that they're in and where they've been placed. So do employers come to you with a list of, op of, of openings that they are hoping for you to fill? They can. Uh, we have had outreach to the Chamber of Commerce at Jefferson County. Um, right now, we're finding most of the opportunities through Goodwill, as I mentioned. They have a service where they find jobs um, and, and need to place people in those jobs. So that's our primary avenue right now for finding opportunities. And then we have the individuals. Yeah, your, your phone started to get a little sketchy again there, Carolyn, as well. Sorry. But now Sorry you're about that. Whenever, whenever I say that, it behaves itself again. So now you sound strong. Oh, yeah. I'm moving the wire around. I wonder if I have a short or something. Sorry about that. Okay. Well, it sounds great right now. Uh, Doreen Schaffner, who I know she does a work as, in her profession and deals with IDD waivers a lot, said that uh, people can support, call their senators and delegates and support SB 617. Uh, to get it passed before the end of the legislative session. And this bill calls for a study of pay rate for direct care workers in the IDD waiver program. The staffing shortage is critical. It's putting right. with d people with disabilities in harm's way because of inadequate staffing. Uh, what's your experience with that, Carolyn? Yeah, that's absolutely true. So um, there, most of the dayhab centers, for example, are very understaffed right now, and that's because the pay rate is, very minimal. I think it's like only $10 an hour or something like that. And I don't want to be misquoted because I'm not 100% sure. Um, but it is really hard to get people at the pay rate that um, the government is able to pay uh, because it is so low. And other organizations, private industry, for example, has, can pay much higher rates to do other types of jobs. So that is absolutely critical. So when we talk about wraparound services and what's available, uh, the funding's available, but the staff and the resources to provide those services are not necessarily there. So I think if we could increase that pay, um, we could increase the amount of people working in the industry, and that way we could increase the amount of services that people with intellectual developmental disabilities have access to. Doreen also says that wait time for a psychiatric evaluation is currently in the 9 to 12 month range. Wow, okay, so I didn't know it was that long. Um, I know with our son, we probably waited about five or six months, but that was a while ago. So again, we probably need more psychologists that are trained and able to do these types of diagnoses and able to pay them um, more funding, so more willing to do it. 
Yeah, here, here, and here's hoping that the reorganization of DHHR addresses that effectively. And the governor also directed effectively locality pay toward the eastern panhandle for uh, those in Child Protective Services and such. Uh, are you aware of any of that actually starting to uh, make a difference, Carolyn? Um, I don't I don't know that I can speak to that. I am aware of that change, and I fully support it, but I don't know that I can really talk to the effect of that at this time. Very good. And uh, could you also, uh, one more time, promote the event this weekend? Yes. For those, anyone interested and available, please come to Shepherd University to the Arc of the Eastern Panhandle's Wellness Expo. Uh, we're going to have guest speakers, health screenings, giveaways, and we'd love to see everyone there. So it's from 2 to 4 this Saturday, Shepherd University Student Center on the third floor. Any final questions for Carolyn, John, or John? No, Carolyn, we're, we're just glad um, glad you're able to shed a little bit of light on, on a problem that is sort of, you know, it's hidden. It's not, it's not right out there in front of us. Absolutely. I just want to thank you for the work you do and, and feel for the challenge it has to be to find folks who, who don't know what to look for when you've got such a valuable resource out there. Good luck to you. Thank you so much. Everyone have a great day. Is there, a, is there a phone number people can call who do need services? That's the one thing we didn't cover. Is there um, a phone number for the ARC or a website for, for the ARC of the Eastern have a Panhandle? Website. Yeah, we absolutely have a website and we have a Facebook. So I'm happy to send that to um, to Bob. Does that make sense to do it that way? Sure, that's fine. That's perfect. And, they, and I'll get him to pass it on to Rob. Yeah, if, if you arc of the Eastern Panhandle, I think, oh. if, if you put that in your search engine, it'll come up because that's how I read about your site. So that'll work. Okay. Carolyn, thank, thank you. you. Have a great day. Thanks, Carolyn. All right. Thank you very Thanks. much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.